Greetings everyone. Welcome to Dorsey's Resource. The topic of this video is going to be about Scotiabank caught manipulating precious metals and I'm going to go over why they were uh, fined and uh, this is going to be under fair use but as usual I like to also give a disclaimer. This video is going to be for educational information and entertainment purposes only. Please understand that everyone's individual circumstance or situation may be different. It's up to every individual competent person to please do his or her homework and research regarding the matter being discussed. This information is not to be construed as legal advice. In the event you feel you need to seek a competent professional, it is encouraged that you do so at one's own leisure. Dorsey's Resource Channel is not liable or responsible for any misuse of the information. Please keep in mind it's up to everyone to govern themselves accordingly. Everyone is responsible for their own affairs. All rights are reserved. Now the jump right into the topic of this video uh, I'm going to cover a couple articles uh, if I have time I'm going to try to connect some dots I didn't really want this video to be too long but just want to point out this is sort of old news this uh, I'm a little late on this topic this uh, as you can see this article is from August 19th uh, 2020 this uh, goes over Scotia Bank will pay 127.4 million to settle spoofing claims why is this important? Uh, by no means am I uh, an expert. I did give a disclaimer, but I'm going to read. It says Bank of Nova Scotia agreed to pay $127.4 million to settle U.S. allegations that the company engaged in spoofing of gold and silver futures contracts and made false statements to the government. As part of the accord, Bank of Nova Scotia will pay a $17 million fine on Commodity Future Trading Commission claims that it dramatically misrepresented the scope of the alleged wrongdoings. The bank made multiple false statements during the CFTC's investigation of a spoofing case that was resolved in 2018 for 800000 the agency said. The regulator said the new punishment reflects Bank of Nova Scotia's lack of cooperation in the earlier probe and actions it took to conceal its misconduct. Wow. Entities seeking to cooperate with the CFTC, like all others that interact with the commission, must tell the truth. James McDonald, the agency's enforcement chief, said in a statement, when entities are not completely truthful, they will be penalized. Bank of Nova Scotia also agreed to a deferred prosecution agreement with the Justice Department tied to criminal charges of attempted price manipulation and wire fraud. Under the agreement, the Toronto-based lender will pay $60.4 in fines, forfeiture, and restitution, which will be offset by the CFTC order. The bank also agreed to hire an independent monitor for three years. Lastly, we understand that in order to maintain the trust of our stakeholders, we must adhere to the trading Re, uh, related regulatory requirements and compliance policies. We are committed to adhering to these standards, the bank said in a statement. So this is the end of this article so far and I wanted to tie this in as you guys uh, so you can see I do some screen captures sometimes uh, to point out as I'm, I'm on uh, Coinflation I just switched to I pulled this uh, up I check the price every now and then as you can see it's showing at the top the uh, Spot price of silver is at $27.36. Now I'm going to refresh the screen in real time so it does fluctuate. So it's, you see in the down arrow it's dropped down to $27.31. So it was just as you guys saw it, just at $0.36. Cents. Not too big of a difference. Gold is at uh, $1,938.92. Uh, and if you guys may be wondering, I was told this information uh, by an elder that has uh, a lot of wisdom I've known for quite a, a number of years which I appreciate uh, he shared with me uh, many years ago and I've come to find out that the prices are actually supposed to be much higher so that article that I read you guys can do your own research which I do encourage everyone to do I put in my disclaimer uh, as far as doing your homework uh, for validity uh, I'm, I'm going to also jump in real time to the national uh, debt clock, usdebtclock.org. And this elder has showed me, as you guys can see in the lower uh, right hand corner, it shows the dollar to silver ratio. It said it's, this is what I was, uh, was shared with me by this elder, what the price is actually supposed to be at 
$4,077 per ounce. It shows in 1913 the dollar to silver ratio uh, was $2.65 per ounce. Now we will uh, jump to gold. It shows the dollar to gold ratio. This is meaning what it's supposed to be at. And the elder mentioned to me, uh, even with these uh, high amounts compared to the amounts that I just showed, what the official market rate is going for now, uh, this is what he was sharing with me, what it's supposed to be at. But he also stated uh, when I spoke with them very recently that these are actually conservative amounts even still. It's even supposed to be much higher than what it's even showing uh, right here. So this shows you there's a uh, big difference between what this site is showing, nationaldebtclock.org. We're showing gold, dollar to gold ratio is supposed to be at 30,956 cents per uh, well, excuse me, $30,956 per ounce. The dollar to gold ratio in 1913 was $28.92. So we jump real quick to coinflation, and you see we're showing the current market value is at $1,938.92. And I'll refresh the screen again in real time so you guys are getting accurate readings okay it's jumped down to one thousand nine hundred thirty nine dollars and fifty six cents uh... silver is at twenty seven dollars and thirty two cents so you may be wondering why is that well the first article that i went over i'm going to try to uh... jump back to uh... right here uh... was put out by uh... bloomberg dot com uh, this was dated August 19th, so I am uh, late covering this. I've been meaning to go over this, but uh, it was sh shared with me. I won't say this person's name and even some other sources, and you guys will even learn if you do follow other uh, channels that speak about precious metals, silver, the commodities market, uh, that uh, I heard that J.P. Morgan Chase allegedly was involved in some of these same type of activities and was caught. Well, this is an example that I was even told recently that uh, there's even more banks and even some investment firms uh, were involved in these things. But this is an example right here. The reason why this is huge, this is why the current market price of silver and gold is highly undervalued right now. And why I stressed if you get a chance, you want to learn as much as you can about uh, precious metals, silver. This is something that's a sleeper uh, and to keep it simple when people have asked me uh, I might do a live video where you guys can see my face but the, the difference is when I do these screen captures I want you guys to be able to see the actual screen that I'm reading from just like when I do research on my computer and I type up different documents by the way but I can do a live uh, where I can have a discussion about this as well that will kind of uh, add another type of perspective and you guys can comment with questions in real time some of the questions that I've been asked well, what are the uh, differences between precious metals and, and the stock market or whatever I look at the commodities market if you uh, I just keep it basic because by no means am I a broker at all this is why I do give a disclaimer this is not financial advice but as one who has uh, held physical precious metals such as silver and gold at one time uh, I would say it's like a physical form of manually uh, if you follow like the price if you keep up every day just similar to the, how people keep up with uh, Bitcoin how they check uh, what the prices are maybe on coinbase or marketcap.com to see what the prices are at. and I say it's really important uh, if you're someone who's serious especially if you're a trader you're highly advanced you're probably gonna be checking the market every day if not multiple times per day uh, to find out to get an idea of what the rates are uh, the highs and lows so you, you're getting the most bang for your buck as the saying goes you buy low sell back high um, just a little bit that I've learned but just going over this is why the price as you're seeing on, on coinflation there's also I pulled up Kitco right here I jumped to another screen which is another market rate you can look at uh, as well and then if you go to JM Bullion site which is actually online uh, coin uh, commodities uh, dealer where you can uh, purchase precious metals from they have the uh, live spot prices in the uh, upper part of the screen just to show you guys uh, by the way so just want you guys to see again now if I jump back 
to us.clock.org, a lot of people don't really explain the reason uh, why uh, precious metals are being manipulated. And that's where this article ties in about how Scotiabank was caught basically uh, manipulating the commodity futures market, the COMEX exchange stands for Chicago Mercantile Exchange. It is also connected to the New York Stock Exchange too, by the way. And, um, you know, I'm kind of adding more clarification because I see some people that have talked about or showed the debt clock in the past, but they haven't elaborated in detail of uh, why uh, the, the, this is what the price, the market price is really supposed to be at 4000 uh, over 4000 per ounce. And my source I was speaking to not too long ago stated that this, that's actually a very conservative amount that it should even be higher than that as well as gold. Uh, from what they were stating to me, I said I was just uh, like, wow, but it doesn't surprise me if you look at the national debt, which is at over 26 trillion. And if it shows you the debt per citizen at over 80,000, then if you scroll uh, down in the lower li uh, right hand corner, it shows liability per citizen, um, which I guess that's like some other type of um, tracking, basically dealing with the uh, the national debt. So there is another article that I have uh, that this article is from, let me see if, it, if I can read this site. This looks like, uh, it says Dow Jones. This is a uh, article from WSJ.com that says Scotiabank fine 127 million for price manipulation, false statements. So I'll read some of this article. It says the Bank of Nova Scotia agreed to pay more than 127 million to settle civil and criminal allegations in connection with its role in what authorities described as a massive price manipulation scheme. It states the next paragraph, the fine is the result of multiple agreements reached Wednesday with the U.S. Justice Department and the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission. The settlement stem in part from thousands of manipulative orders for precious metals, futures contracts placed on U.S. exchanges over an eight-year period by four uh, traders at the bank known as the Scotia Bank, the agency said. The settlements also resolve claims by the CFTC that Scotia Bank made false statements and incomplete disclosures about alleged price manipulation by its traders in connection with a prior investigation by the derivatives market regulator. Ooh, wow, that's pretty deep. I know you, some of you guys, if you've been following my channel, my work, uh, have discussed uh, about derivatives in the past. The states further on, Scotia Bank also agreed to resolve further claims by, I kind of went over that earlier, so I'll jump down a little bit. Uh, says the steep fine and imposition of a, a monitor reflected the seriousness of Scotia Bank's offense and the state of its compliance program. Robert Zink, chief of the Justice Department's criminal fraud section, said in a statement, um, guess they're going into why the fine was steep, that these were egregious violations. So Scotia Bank in this next section uh, said Wednesday that it has set aside money for the fines in earlier quarters says we understand that in order to maintain the trust of our stakeholders we must adhere to trading related regulatory requirements and compliance policies which i went over uh, earlier this article is pretty much rehashing uh very similar now i will say uh to jump down at the last paragraph it states the price manipulation scheme was compounded by several compliance failures federal prosecutors said in one case in 2013 one of the traders uh, involved in the unlawful trading co contacted a compliance officer to seek clarification on the CFTC's guidance on disruptive trading practices, they said. The trader's email detailed how the trader was engaging in problematic activity by placing groups of one contract orders on one side of the market to facilitate execution on the other, prosecutor said. The compliance officer forwarded the note to a colleague but made no effort to investigate the traders' practices. They said the manipulation caused other market participants to lose about $6.6 .6 million, according to the Justice Department. The department on Wednesday filed its agreement 
which defers criminal charges of wire fraud and attempted price manipulation in federal court in New Jersey. It further states the agreement requires Scotiabank to pay more than $60.4 million in criminal penalties, uh, disgorgement, and victim compensation. Prosecutors said half of the criminal penalty would be credited against fines by the CFTC. The CFTC agreement settled two separate enforcement actions against Scotiabank, the regulator said, one related to the price manipulation scheme known as spoofing, and another related to the bank's conduct as a swaps dealer, the regulator said. Spoofing is designed to trick other investors into buying and selling at artificially high or low prices. Uh, by the way, this is dealing with like the paper game, guys. That's why to jump back real quick when I went over uh, the stream coinflation, and you guys can check uh, Kitco if you check the current market price of silver. This is and gold, which is supposed to be drastically higher than what it's at. Uh, basically, if you understand uh, the uh, the what this article is is going over, uh, breaking things down very well about what spoofing is. It says Scotia Bank was fined eight hundred thousand by the CFTC in 2018 for spoofing in the gold and silver futures market. There's a part that looked like I skipped. Uh, looks really juicy. It says in both actions as well in the agreement with the Justice Department, Scotiabank was accused of misleading regulators at the CFTC and making incomplete disclosures at times due to inconsistent record keeping. Uh, by the way, okay, that's uh, really juicy. So I had read the following paragraph uh, already. So I'll jump down uh, to this section. With regards to its swap dealer business, Scotiabank had failed to meet certain disclosure supervision and compliance requirements, the CFTC said. It also made false or misleading statements to CFTC staff about audio recordings used to supervise its swaps business, the regulator said. In the order settling the CFTC's claim, Scotiabank neither admitted nor denied the regulator's findings. Corey Flom, one of Scotiabank's traders described in the settlement, pleaded guilty to attempted price manipulation in 2019. The former Scotiabank trader is scheduled to be sentenced early next year, according to the Justice Department. Wow. Okay, guys. So this is why I thought this uh, article, these couple articles backed each other up. They were important. There were a few other uh, channels that talk about precious metals that did cover this topic, but I noticed it didn't look like uh, everyone necessarily covered this topic, but there was quite a bit out there. You know, uh, like I said, to reiterate, I'm late on it, but I want to let my subscribers know uh, this is one of the reasons why, in case you're wondering, uh, why the price of silver and gold at right now or the current market rate uh, is as low as what it is uh, right now believe it or not even though that would be super high for people looking at gold it was like you know with the premium on top of that that's like over two thousand dollars easily and I know people don't have that type of uh, currency uh, on hand like that but silver is still cheap right now even though some people complain about this price with the the uh, recent bull market I believe it's in it's pulled back a little bit of course people said there would be pullbacks uh coming however uh I agree with Mike Maloney and others said still at this price is still a steal uh if you can uh you know you want to learn as much as you can to educate yourself about it um by the way and you know this is not financial or legal advice but one of the thing that the elder did share with me even though as a result and showing the evidence that this not only Scotia Bank but it's others out there as one I mentioned earlier have been accused of this I even heard as well as investment firms he did state that they're doing us a favor but as long as these prices are low I would say it's best to get get some skin in the game uh, before it, it gets far out of hand because I thought about this uh, and this was shared with me as well when silver reaches fifty dollars per ounce which uh it that was like its record level in two different dates uh heard happened like once back in the uh, early 1980s and then the other time it reached uh 49 uh, i think dollars was the high amount to be exact around 2011 
uh, somewhere around that time frame. I can't remember exactly, so don't quote me on it. Uh, but even if it, if it reaches, we know that because it's only so much uh, silver that's above ground and it's used in a lot of electronic devices, medical devices, TVs, uh, it's highly sought after and there's only so much that's above ground, by the way, because a lot of uh, technological companies uh, and it's used, uh, has a high demand in industrial use, just like other things. So the prices won't, will not always stay this low forever, just like copper one day that is another uh good investment good thing to to get into that's like the poor man's version uh of silver or like how silver would be like the little brother or younger cousin to uh gold so when people complain that this price is high when earlier this year it was below twenty dollars an ounce at many different times uh even when the the premiums went up sky high on the silver eagles they were still a heck of a deal uh, right now, because even with, when you add on the premiums, which is like an unofficial tax, uh, Silver Eagles are easily going for thirty-seven uh, dollars, around forty bucks, you know, uh, per ounce. You know, um, and, and you know that's other, even other coins as well, other other bullion um, too. So, just a heads up to everybody, you know, the elder did tell me one of my sources that that he said they're actually doing us a favor, and I see what he's talking about now. So this is still an opportunity to jump in the game, to get some skin in the game while you can. And uh, just a heads up to everybody. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to get ready to shut this video down. I appreciate you guys for taking the time out, your busy schedule. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, uh, please, under the video, uh, there, there should be a bell in the uh, lower right hand corner you want to make sure you hit that bell so whenever I put out new videos YouTube should notify you you can follow me on Facebook at Dorsey's resource I'm also on uh, Twitter at Dorsey's resource I'm also on minds.com at Dorsey's resource and obviously I'm on YouTube uh, I do have a second channel uh, by the way that's under Dorsey's resource it'll say Dorsey's resource second channel is linked to this main channel so you may want to go over there and uh, follow me over there as well. Uh, by the way, I may drop some Jews uh, when I'm not doing things over here. You know, I may be planning some stuff for over there. So appreciate you guys uh, for taking the time out. Just wanted to do this quick video to give you all a heads up on my take uh, and why, you know, to show you guys the proof that this does happen with uh, bank manipulation. I have heard of Scotia Bank before. Uh, and it's and it's other banks I was told that get in trouble for this. So without further ado, appreciate you guys taking the time out your busy schedule. Once again, I'm your host, John Dorsey at Dorsey's Resource. You can follow me on Facebook at Dorsey's Resource, on Twitter at Dorsey's Resource, and obviously on YouTube. And don't forget to uh like, share, comment, and subscribe. Everyone uh have a blessed, wonderful day. Take care.